Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for, for coming on this beautiful day. I'm sure it was uh, was tough. Um, if we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Uh, welcome back, everybody. I hope everyone's having a good summer um, and ready to uh, get back to either teaching school or going to school with some of you in the room. Um, and uh, we're just going to get right to it, uh, you know, catch up with what's been happening over the summer, right? And uh, where everybody's at. And so I'm just going to, um, before we do that, I guess we have to approve the minutes uh, from last time. So is there any questions on the minutes? Anyone have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes of June 26, 2023 as written. Okay. Any second? Meg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, without further discussion, all, uh, all in favor? Okay, we've approved that. Um, we didn't have a chance to talk any adjustments, anything new? Okay. Um, I'd say public session, but it's looking like we don't have anyone from the public. So I think we're okay. Um, so we're gonna go right to the superintendent's report. Patrick. Uh, so just opening a school, uh, schools, <laughs> schools look good. I mean, Dennis is here tonight. He's gonna give you an overview, so I won't go into great detail, but the custodial crew, we went around last Friday and the schools look great. Um, we currently have three ed tech openings right now. Um, we're in the process. We have some, you know, a couple leads. Um, and then we have one food service assistant position that's still open as well, but that's it at this point right now. I would say also here, which is a unique position at Morris, but our athletic training position is vacant right now. And we're working with Mid Coast Hospital and Maine Health to try to um, secure somebody, at least for the fall. But we're also looking outside at different organizations to see if we can um, fill that need because it is a, a need for our student athletes. They depend on that person and our coaches do, too. Um, tomorrow we have new staff orientation and then we have two staff PD days this week, which is Wednesday, Thursday, and the first day with K to nine students is September 5th and all students on September 6th. Uh, advanced placement. I just, some, we got some good news this summer. I'm not going to go through all the detail of it, uh, but we received our scores back and we had 95 students take, uh, one or more of the 14 tests for a total of 174 exams that were taken last May. And we had eight students. Um, well, first I'll say our test average for every single course was above the state average and the global average by quite a bit, wow. which is impressive Great. because if you have a few students or one student <laughs> that sits for an exam, it could be very high or it could be uh, um, you know, a little lower. So it was impressive to see all that. Eight students were the first at Morris to earn the AP Capstone Diploma, and we also had eight students earn the AP Capstone Certificate, and 31 students earned the AP Scholar Award based on the number of exams they took as well as their scores on those exams. Um, and again, I, I guess the feedback, I'll just share a few comments we always receive from students is just um, AP, the value is just that challenge, getting them into the colleges, trying to get into the colleges that they want to, the academic confidence that they have when they get to college, as well as college credit, which helps save some money, which isn't a bad thing. But also, it's allowed students to do double majors. It's allowed them to do study abroad um, or to graduate early uh, from college because of the, the credits that they receive. So it's a very valuable program. And I would say that uh, first, thank you to our teachers. And often we maybe, um, in passing, thank our AP teachers, uh, which is important, but we also have a slew of other staff in the district from pre-K up that have helped our students get to the point where they're confident to take classes uh, at that level. And also just a thank you to the students because we want students to challenge themselves, even if they just take one AP class when they're in high school. Uh, and even if they don't get the grade that maybe they normally would get in another class or they don't get the score that they want, um, the, the hope here is that you you gain from the, the challenge and the experience. Um, one thing that we're doing this year that some of you who are parents would know about if you pay attention to your email, but is um, we're moving to an online registration process this year. 
And so I, um, for new students, but also for returning students. So as a parent, you shouldn't be filling out any paperwork. Uh, everything should be done online. And um, there may be a few unique forms that they might have to do, but for the most part, it'll make us much more efficient and effective and accurate. And I think parents will hopefully appreciate it as well. And so a, a special thank you to Kim Burgess, who's here tonight, and Matt Fry Davis, because um, hundreds of hours have gone into this. And, um, you know, it's taken a little bit of time, a little bit of effort and money, but in the long run, it's going to uh, help us, uh, again, be more efficient. And then lastly, uh, set for success, I'll let Jamie kind of comment on this, but we had that yesterday where we give out free supplies to students. They get to see the community resources, get haircuts, a lot of different services, and it's always amazing to see. But Jamie, do you want to, Jamie and her crew, they deserve all the credit. We just set it up. Um, and you want to go over some of the numbers? Um, thank you very much to Buzz and the crew that helped us get all of the tables set up. That's always such a big chore um, and helping us get all the school supplies in. Um, so we had 647 students that we actually checked in and I'm estimating another 20 or so that were volunteers at the event who went through um, without checking in. Morse came in with the highest at 162, BMS 138, Woolwich 100 on the nose. Fisher Mitchell, 88, Dyke Newell, 125, and Phippsburg, 26. Um, we had Georgetown there as well, but didn't get her numbers before she um, headed out. And then eight homeschool families came through. And I think my favorite part is just to see how excited everybody is, whether it's teachers and parents connecting, parents and um, you know administrative staff. It's just a totally different atmosphere than um, I think the rest of the year and everyone gets really, really excited about it. So thank you all for helping us to do it. That's great. Are we all set now? I think so. I saw our mom out shopping yesterday, and it was, she was with three little boys, and I felt like saying, oh, you must not go to RSU1 because you'd be over there getting your supplies. She was, she was shopping for supplies. Well, welcome back, everybody. Here we are. It's time to start again, right? Um, so you have two financial reports in your packet, and one is June. Um, and that basically is the one that we'll focus on tonight. And it's just, I'm happy to report that we, um, it looks like we have about 500,000 left in expenses, um, unaudited, but uh, the audit process starts on Friday. Um, and so I think we did pretty much, we did a good job as, and got where we, felt that we needed to be, or we wanted to be anyways. Um, we went over in transportation and operation um, and maintenance a little bit, but overall we came out ahead of the game. Um, revenue side, we have about 50,000 more in revenue. So um, all, all went well for the year. Um, the other report is for July. And once again, we're just starting out here. So, um, our $41 million budget. So we've spent uh, almost $2 million. Um, and that's basically everything, uh, salaries and benefits for July and August contracts, and then a lot of supplies and a lot of um, contracted fees and that type of thing up front for the year. Um, ARP funds, we have about 20% that we spent. Um, and this year we're looking at about 9.5 FTE positions that will be funded with that. And then Dennis is doing quite a few projects in the buildings. Um, as far as hiring goes, see Kim, we've been, we've been busy. And now when I counted up the numbers tonight, I know why we have 26 new employees, that's new bodies and 14 transfers in, around in different positions. So quite a few. So that's it. 
Thank you, Deb. Any, any questions? Jen? Yeah. Jen? Uh, out of the 9.5, um, uh, are they all full-time employees for no. the ARP? No? No. Okay. So basically we have um, seven full-time and then the rest are different percentages that make a part-time position a full-time position. Okay. And last year there were four social workers in that mix. Now there are two because remind me, did two social workers go into our budget? One went into our budget. One was never filled last year. Okay. And we'll get, and when do you think we'll have new enrollment figures? Um, October 1st, I would say. Okay. Yeah, I'll update that when those come in. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Deb. Um, old business, uh, you had the book board goals that were sent. Yeah, I just put those in there. Um, so I'm going to put them in there every meeting and, um, you know, maybe at the end of our official meetings, we could touch on those and just talk about if there's anything at the meeting that touched on those. And then, um, you know, probably Lou and I, when we set agendas with and Jamie, um, we'll talk about if there's one specific goal that maybe we aren't hitting much that maybe we do a presentation or like a workshop on um, and bring teachers in, um, you know, our students in to be able to um, educate the board on certain things on the goals. So that's all, I just put it on there to, to get us into that kind of routine. Great, thank you. It's good to remind everybody of the goals. Um, any questions on that, Jamie? Um, I should probably just look this up myself, but what is the um, policy around, there always seems to be discussion with sports teams, especially in the fall, um, with coaches that use social media to disperse information and parents who are not on social media. Do you remember off the top of your head what that guideline is? I don't right now, but I can certainly research it and look into it. Yeah. It would just be helpful um, to remind everyone because I know that there are some parents who are not on social media. Uh, yeah, to get all the, all the information. Yeah. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, 9.0 new business, um, summer facilities work. Dennis, you're up. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a good summer. Um, I'll get right into it. Uh, Phippsburg Elementary School, we're almost complete with the uh, re-roofing project. I'd say we're closer to 99% now as of today. Um, so that's soon to be behind us. Uh, the generator, um, we've done all the electrical work within the building so that, so CMP has to shut down the power when we hook up to it. So they've done all that. So we don't anticipate any more shutdowns. And the generator is still here at the high school. It's uh, on a trailer out back. And um, as soon as I can get the electricians back, we'll, we'll get that hooked up and ready to go that'll complete, that'll do the entire school. So we won't have to worry about canceling school when we have a power outage. So it's a, it's a really good uh, positive thing. Uh, we replaced uh, carpets in two of the rooms, room 15 and 16. Um, that is complete. And we replaced two sets of doors in the rear of the building in Phippsburg, this two like I don't know, you call them like wings. We replaced two on uh, a set on each side. So they have nice aluminum doors. They should last for a long time. At the new Dyke School, new old Morse High School, new Dyke, new old school. We retubed to uh, a boiler. We went through the winter with just one boiler and it's kind of risky to do that. Uh, we Now we have redundancy, so we should be in good shape for this winter coming up. Um, Bath Middle School, uh, you'll, if you go up Old Brunswick Road, you'll notice there's two 15 mile an hour, uh, warning lights now installed. Uh, I think 
it was before I got here. I think Patrick wrote the grant for that and received it. And we finally got them in over the summer. Um, so that will slow down traffic. It, it really needed to. It's a good spot. We completed the hot water tank re uh, removal and replacement. So we got two energy efficient hot water heaters in there. I want to remind you, I don't know if we talked about it before, but that allows us to make hot water even in the summertime without running those big boilers. It's going to save us money. It's got 2.26 year payback. So that's a, that's a good solid project. I'm looking forward to, we actually got them running today. So I'm, I'm looking forward to some savings there in, in oil or uh, natural gas, I should say. Uh, and the front office is remodeled. We're, 95% complete on that. We had to wait for some um, some of the units. Uh, they should be in September 8th, so we can wrap that up. But I think it looks pretty good over there. If you get a chance, stop by and have a look. Um, Woolwich Center School, it kind of inherited an AC project over there, but um, we've got all the parts and pieces now. Um, some of the inside work's done. Most of the loud work is done, so we can continue to work on that, even with kids in the school. So there won't be any disruption, and we'll be able to get that thing up and running. We still have the winter unit, so you know we'll keep those in there till the end of the fall, till you know we don't need them any longer. But uh, but we'll we're getting there with that. That's a that's a big project. All the lights and switches are just about changed out there. We talked about, I, I don't know if you guys know, but when you, the light switches were breaking off, they didn't have any paddles on them anymore. Um, so we changed all those out to, and we changed the lights at the same time to LED. So there's this, a, a savings there. We're actually gonna save some energy there while we did that. So uh, I think there was one room left as of today and I, uh, that was at 2.30, so it's probably one room left till tomorrow. <laughs> but it'll be good to put that behind us. And we built a small path, um, it's an ADA path for um, on the playground. So um, Jason asked me to do that. We were able to do that. We didn't, it was nothing fancy, just some stone dust, but we dug it out. We made a nice path to a swing and... Um, a twirly thing, I don't know what you call it, but uh, for somebody that has trouble getting around. Fisher Mitchell, we changed two carpets, two rooms, small rooms off the office. Uh, we use this carpet squares, they're a little different than this, but they're really nice. People seem to uh, really like them. You'll see them at the middle school if you go. And we abated one classroom. We had a, a water leak in one of the bookcases there. So we had to take the bookcase out and have that cleaned up and we took care of that early in the summer so um, it's it's in good shape now uh, Morse High School we uh, wow we took the whole cosmetology and that hallway and a couple of rooms behind the library and a couple of rooms in the AT and we had them take the tile out because they were lifting and uh, they took them all out they finally finished that um, last week it's kind of biting our nails on that one, but uh, they got it done. So, I mean, you know, here we go. And uh, this duct work, I, I threw that in there. I, we had a piece of duct, they built that house inside the carpentry, really impressive, but they had a piece of duct work there that was kind of in the way. So we got that moved for them too. And then we've done a, a ton of little things, you know, there's a lot of little things that you can't bring up but my crew works hard and the custodians were and buzz you know he's the, the great crew here it's a wonderful bunch of people i really enjoy working with them they're hard workers so any questions that's great um just wanna so is there any like unfit is there anything else that like has to get done aside from the ac stuff over at woolwich which you said could be done while the kids are there is there any other outstanding things that you're concerned or just that you'll have to do no moment. i think you know we concentrated on making sure that we wouldn't disrupt students right. when they come back so yep. we 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 knew we had to get the hot water running because yep. you got to have hot water to wash your hands so yeah. they took care of that they just finished that actually they fired it up today um 
So we're in really good shape for when school starts. It we are. Like. I think yeah, we are. Great. I mean, we went around Thank with you. Patrick. He didn't have anything, anything negative to say. So <laughs> that was a win in my book. There so. you go. Right, right. So. No, that's great. Okay. It's Just really, yeah. Just anything else on the books. Excellent. Um, yeah. Jen? Um, so can you tell me a little more about the air conditioning at Woolwich? Um, this has been on the table for a while and we've had to shut the school down, the entire school down, just like Phippsburg, you know, for the generator. And it's going to be really hot these first months of school. And I do believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we actually took out air conditioning units from Woolwich and sent them over to the new Dyke and Newell in anticipation of the air conditioning project to be done. I don't think so. No? Okay. So I think so every the air conditioners are in the third floor where the where the issue has been they and they're in there we left them in there all summer we bought separate units for dyke newell when they moved over okay. there um the reason that this did not get finished is because a um, i'm not going to go into great detail but um we had a company that we had a contract with and it um, fell through um, mm -hmm. because it wasn't to our satisfaction and so we had to go with another company um, that dennis had to change um, but you know the gentleman was there we talked to him last week um, they're moving fairly quickly and yeah. they can do a lot of behind the scenes work and should be, I said to him, I said, we'd be done by maybe end of October, beginning of November. And he felt like he would be. Yeah. Um, so we have the air conditioning units, which again, have seemed to work well. For are those our, in all floors, not just the no, third, third floor? floor only. Yeah. That seems the to be where floor. the problems are. Okay. The other yeah. floors are hot too, right? I mean, it's, I, I'm not sure that they're any hotter than BMS's second floor or, um, yeah. you know, some of the, you know, other schools that we've had. I mean, we all, we closely monitor it, yeah. um, you know, and, so we haven't, I mean, that's the way it's been the last two or three years is we've, we bought them for the third floor because the, the heat, um, when we measured how hot it was, it was the third floor that needed it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Most. Heat so, rises. Yeah. 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 So we're trying to, I, I, it would be done, but it just, that, right. that what happened in the fall before Dennis started with that project, um, delayed it by at least six months. So by the time they get in, they're not really going to be used much because they'll be cold, cold enough. So they yeah, really no, aren't going to yeah, be. Right. Right. It'll be but, ready for the spring. Yeah. You know, it'll be good in the spring. Right. Doesn't yeah. They did get the pipes. So the pipes are in. It's just, so they've been concentrating on the hot water this week, you know, this to finish at up. No, at Bath Middle School. Oh, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we had to get that done for the school. We absolutely had to get right. You know, you have to have hot water in the kitchen. So now they're moving to um, Woolwich. They've been doing some there too. They're still working there. They got a couple of different crews on it. So I try to push them as much as I can, but they kind of took the job over. So I'm working with them. Um, they're doing a really good job. Um, okay. You know, it's just, it's unfortunate that it happened that way, but um, okay. it was beyond our control really. What kind of units are they? Oh, you had to add uh, Are they duct are they ducted or are they like Oh no, they're full split systems. Yeah. They have they have uh, an evaporator in the air control system sure. like that feeds the school and the condensers are outside on yeah. the ground. Yep. Well they're not on the ground, but you know. And uh they just piped in. So it's a complete split system. It's yeah. it's big. Yeah. It's really big. It Is should... there just one for the whole thing? No, no, it's three yeah. units, okay. three condenser saying. units, three evaporating units. Yeah. And they have a separate unit for the office, but that's been on on for you know yeah. that still works. The, that's um, fine. The hot water heaters are those part of the efficiency main heating? Uh, Is it kind of a hybrid heater? No, no, it's, it's well, kind of, yeah. Uh, it's more gas, no natural gas, but not so much hybrid. No, yeah. but it, it is quite efficient. Yeah, uh, they have like a ninety-two yeah, percent efficient yeah, rating. Yeah. They are, you know. We wouldn't put anything in that wasn't, you know, we kind of, that's part of the deal with me and, you know, with us is we'd like to, you know, yeah. like the LED lighting, you know, that's so efficient now. I mean, everybody, everybody rushed to get the T5s in there and then they, all of a sudden now everybody, we got to do it again. So, but we'll get there, you know, it's just one step at a time and it's really coming along. I'm sorry, do you have, did you have another question? Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering, so um, with the air conditioning units, the way they have them now, um, can they be run during instruction? I mean, the noise level that they create, yeah. does, that, does that impair like being able for the teacher to instruct or having group yeah. discussions? 
So the units we're putting in? The units that are in now. That well, they're window units. They, they, right. do, they do make some noise. So, uh, Mm -hmm. um, oh. So they can run. Yeah, I mean, I think all of us built them during COVID because of the masking. So all the teachers were using it. And yeah. Until we came more so if it, I don't know. I did, I've never been in one where I thought, wow, I can't do anything. But should it be a problem or if a student is part of the thing, they do have the right to be you know, clumsy and everything in general. Yeah. yeah. So they can be run twenty four seven if they're if they want to run if they if they feel like they need to run them the air yeah, units I right mean, now they can be run constantly and and do they get left running at night or do they get to the I, teachers you know to... I started in December and I really haven't been okay. here for that but um, I'll I'll find out okay um, no our, our custodians I mean we want them off when they leave I mean obviously a yeah. morning custodian could turn them on if they really knew it was going to be a hot day but right. um, you know you. There's yeah. a school in Southern Maine Makes that sense. had an issue with, yep. you know, um, air conditioning that um, was left on and caused a caused a problem. So, uh -huh. um, you know, we just want to make sure we're safe. To, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I've been in rooms where they've had the AC on, just observing, and um, yeah, yeah, it's mean, there, but it's that means they can, they're still teaching and, and learning. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, I just wanted to go over some quick numbers about how the summer panned out. So um, this is like a story in numbers. We served 2,519 meals this summer to students, served and delivered. Um, we had over 250 students in all of our programs. We had at least five programs um, going on at any Usually at any given time, especially in July, um, used four of our schools. We partnered with one organization, um, actually two, the Y for the Food and then uh, Midcoast Youth Center um, hosted our six through eight um, program. Um, 21 students at the high school level earned credits that they needed to stay on track. And we had one graduation. Uh -huh. So overall, um, rather than reiterate what programs um, we had, I would say this is definitely something um, that we should consider how we want to move forward because it was so successful. And um, other than a smaller program at the high school and obviously um, the extended learning for students with IEPs, which is required, we really don't have currently and in our budget funds for summer school, nor has there been for, a, I've been told, a while. And so as the board's moving into budget season, um, we'll want to consider if this is something we want to continue in some capacity. Um, it is, I wish I should have asked Deb to put a full price tag on the cost of everything. I um, We can get that to you another time. Um, so Deb, are you writing that note to look for the cost of summer school in total? Because that would be an interesting number to look at and sort of piece out what each program cost. ARP. Yeah, the whole thing was funded through ARP. Yeah. So and that's it. And did you, so did you feel that, you know, I'm, we don't have to go into details now, but the, what was put together with that money and how it came out was this, um, are overall, like you're thinking a good model to I, possibly I continue. Do. And that's why you'd yeah. want to say, this is the price tag or were there things that you no. said, oh, we don't need this, but yeah. we could use that something else. Or I mean, what, if you had a chance to, yeah, not so a chance I, to analyze it. I would say that, I mean, at the high school, it's very obvious, which is why we've always done it. It's to earn credits to right. sort of stay on track to graduate. Um, for extended school year, they work specifically on um, and this is another one that we always fund, um, specifically on the students' IEP goals and ensuring their basic skills maintained so they don't have sort of a summer slump. Um, mm. In our intervention program and ELL program that happened in the summer at Woolwich, 
Um, they each year, it's been completely teacher led um, by an interventionist and one and a very strong teacher, both who work at Woolwich, who come up with a theme, look at the student data of the students who are in intervention and build and group students. So it's essentially four days a week of intervention for three weeks of students. And so it's very targeted. Um, and um, I, we always look at sort of the data where those kids have ended up. We haven't done the assessing yet because they're not back yet, but that's something we look at. And it definitely helps with just sort of the retention, the bare minimum retention of knowledge, if not growth in skills. So, so I guess I'm confused. So what was new this year? No. Well, the last few, this was the third year of ARP funded summer right. school. Okay. So, so this will be the last one because the money is gone at the end of June. So before we had that money, did we, we did, just do high school or we just, we did? just did high school okay. and um, students with extended school year in their IEPs. Um, and then there was nothing at the middle school program and Jamie and Lisa and their staff have built something, you know, that's, even more comprehensive than our ELL and intervention population experiences. Um, many more weeks, it's more hours, um, and the hours are kind of different, so kids can sleep in and then mm -hmm. wake up and come for a big chunk of the afternoon where they might otherwise make different choices about their yep. day. Oh, yeah. um, and so that was funded through us as well. And we, we funded part of their staffing, but also provided space in at BMS so they could use both facilities. So, so how, how I don't many, know if you want to add anything else. Are we talking about for that uh, for each year? 40 to 50. It, yeah, it was high high 40s wow, this year. It's the okay. most and we all and they also hire our um, many of our high school students to help we out, which is a great leadership opportunity. And we try to hire um, ours who want to staff that are looking for some <laughs> yeah, they want some yep. summer work. Yeah, yep. and then we have a lot of kids that are coming up from fifth grade mm -hmm. into sixth grade, so they get to, used to the middle school. They can mm -hmm. meet some oh, people nice. that are yeah. around. They yeah. can, you know, learn. Um, Won't be such a shock in yeah. September. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of the young people that we serve through that program would not be able to participate in a summer rec program or the summer Y camp program because of the cost. Um, and this one is free mm -hmm. and kids we had um, people that were donating food like mm -hmm. restaurants that would donate food and then on Wednesdays one group of students would actually cook for all of the others mm -hmm. and serve that yeah and, cool. and I should mention too that you know it, these things were open to all of the kids in all of the schools mm -hmm. in the district even though they were you know they're some took place in Woolwich, some took place in Bath. Um, but even the intervention program, um, they tried to make it more campy because um, it, it was it serving students who might not otherwise have the opportunity to go to camp. And so um, it's built with, you know, a breakfast and then a short lesson and playtime for this mm -hmm. game. And then we're going to go outside and play ball after the math lesson. That's great. And, um, so it's, it's a very... Um, kinesthetic program. It's not four hours of sitting in desks. Right, right. No, that's great. Um, did you have a question, Jen? Come. So, um, Kay, was there transportation provided also to get kids from anywhere, anywhere they live? If we needed it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was some of what the money went for. Right, right. Um, and so the middle school program that you were talking about, Jamie, was that run by your organization? Okay. And did, was the ARP pay for that middle school as well, or did you did your organization? What it was the partial. Were there, there was a part. She, in, uh, the MYC invoiced us for an agreed upon cost of our funding, and the other was grant funded. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't. We, yeah, every year it's a Jamie. It's a lot of money, and so we pay a portion. Yeah, I mean, if you can give us a breakdown of cost, okay. that would be helpful. Yeah, so absolutely. Know, so we know what Yeah, go ahead. And, oh, Dennis is gone. Um, so uh, the more we use our schools during the summertime, does that ever bump up against the work that we need to do? Yes. And are we finding a struggle? I mean, it's wonderful we use them. I'm a huge supporter of this program. Um, but I just know from personal experience how hard yeah. it can be to get in there and clean up after and get ready. And Honestly, we have 
fabulous custodians and facilities. And so we tried to condense, like we used, used, used to use Fisher, but this year decided not to. So we could condense where the kids were so they could do more projects. Dennis and Buzz tried to do more projects where we weren't to impact. So we would impact them the least and they would impact us the least. So maybe that will change, for the, like it will change depending on what the building's yeah, needs or things like that. Have, yeah. And okay. also, you know, doesn't necessarily make sense to have it in, at Phippsburg ever, even though it's a lovely facility, just because of the transportation. And so, mm. it, you know, having it in Bath or Woolwich is just more central, you know. Great. Um, any other questions, comments? That sounds wonderful. Thanks for the detail. Um, a 9.3 Dyke Newell school update, Patrick. Yeah, um, just a, a quick update. Um, you know, we, for a year now, have been advocating for to be considered an emergency project under um, the provision because of what happened with the fire. And we finally were able to make a presentation, a couple of them, but finally a presentation to the state um, board construction committee, which is a subcommittee of the state board. And, um, you know, both the district up north and we at the same time at the same meeting. And, um, and then they were able to take some time to deliberate. And, um, you know, in the end, they um, did not recognize us as a emergency project where there would be funding immediately available. And I guess I would say their recommendation was for us to, for both schools to reapply in the next cycle, um, you know, of construction projects. So, and then the state board met after that, I don't know, maybe a month after that and um, supported that recommendation from that subcommittee. So that's where we um, ended up in July, June, July. And then um, from there, and I do want to say uh, Eloise Vitelli and Allison Hepler have been um, very supportive, very generous with their time. And so since that meeting, um, uh, Eloise Vitelli and Senator Jackson from up in the county have written a joint letter, um, you know, saying thank you for your time, but we also would like to have you consider uh, instead of having to reapply for the Dyke Newell School in the next cycle, that we would just we would automatically be um, guaranteed a, a, a slot um, in the next round of building applications so that we would be guaranteed it so that we could be somewhat proactive and there'd be some hope for our community that we could possibly just start the process of I guess I would say visioning um, you know with an architect not a lot but just to start the project so we can so that we we know we have something to look forward to um, and so that was the latest um request that um that they send up there and so that's where we are and we're going to continue to advocate and continue to talk with the department of education and with the state board um so we'll we'll put a letter out to you know uh, the rsu1 community to give them a, an update probably tomorrow um just you know so that people have that um but we're i guess i would say we're not um we're not giving up we're still going to try to advocate to try to speed this up as much as possible um, for our community. So I'll stop there. Jamie and Lou, you guys were, you know, part of the process this summer. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, anything? No, I think you put it succinctly. You know, it's just it's important that we get this approval so we can get started, so we don't have it doesn't take us three more years. I mean, it could then take us three years instead of six years or something. It's it was. We were not happy with uh, what that committee was coming up with, and um, there's a lot of stuff. So we'll see what happens after, uh, you know, sending this letter to them. If uh, that doesn't work, then we'll we'll look at other avenues. But we're we're going to keep plugging away at this till we get get where we need to be. Um, thank you, thank you for that update, and um, Patrick, appreciate it. Yeah, you go ahead. So, um, Patrick, there was some mention of, of maybe funding the next phase of, you know, looking for the next possible school build um, uh, solution with some insurance funds from, the, from you know, you, reusing those for some purpose of doing some research. Am I correct? There was some use of insurance funds? Yeah, I mean, just the possibility of using local money or insurance money and po the possibility of the state reimbursing us for that. Um, so that if we were to be proactive as, and we were approved for a project, 
that we could at least get started on that. Um, so is that like, uh, I was wondering about, you know, if how that works in terms of how can we use funds, you know, usually we have to get approved for any excess funds we get from the state or something like that. So I don't know how insurance funds. Um, by, by statute, we, you know, the insurance proceeds that we receive, um, those go towards the bonding process of a new school. Also the repair, right? I yeah. mean, repa but, any repairs? Right. So in other words, we've received around $11 million. We've used about two to two and a half to do, have to do the renovations, have to repair, have to replace all the belongings that we lost. And then uh, Deb, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we have one to one and a half million that Deb has set aside because, and that that first two million to two point five includes the operations for this past year too, because we have to heat the building, utilities, yeah, all that type yeah, of stuff. Yeah. And then the one to one point five is set aside because we're you know we're going to be in that building for a few more years at least um, to help fund that. And then, but the seven million is what I guess I would say is our best guesstimate right now of what Deb has, what we've communicated to the state board that we have that would go towards by statute would go towards reducing so to speak the the a bond for you know for a new school um when it comes to fruition so the likelihood of uh there ever being able to be a resell of that building in time to get any rebate back to the municipalities for um the bond that was there is pretty slim right with the long with I think, the time frame i think with this decision i'm not saying it's you know it, it's it can't happen but i think right. you know we owe six hundred thousand, maybe left deb and i were looking at that recently um and it's what three or four more years right. yeah so i mean again in order to get approval by the state um they did one thing they did ask is they that the state board did request to the department of education to try to expedite the next round of projects that would be approved but i mean they have a small team um and you know you have to it, it's going to take some time um and so yeah this i mean this puts us i guess i would say i don't want to say puts us back but it stalls us because we didn't we weren't offered um it wasn't a conversation about uh, emergency money uh, immediately it was again wait and try to apply next time if this comes through right so we're in a position where we have a we're fortunate that we have a school where um you know, we're not having to use this insurance money to pay rent or to pay for portables, but at the same time, I, I hear what you're getting at. It prolongs so that the agreement, the MOU that we have may not, uh, the timing of that may not work. And so I- Right, know, and Bath ends up with an improved school, um, you know, because they're not paying, they're not having to pay to maintain it and they're, and we're improving it as we need to, which is, and they're not charging us rent, which is very grateful that we have this, but I mean, Bath is, you know, Bath is getting an improved asset and the RSU is, you know, we're using that, we're going to, we're going to use that money back into Bath, back into Bath to buy a new, build a new school for Bath and Bath is getting an improved asset in that building and they're going to sell that improved asset, gain a profit on it. And that profit's not going to come back to the municipalities because it's going to be beyond the time frame. So since there was, since this has happened, could we revisit the time frame for the MOU and say, extend that to say, because Bath couldn't sell this property now and we couldn't receive any benefit from that. Is there any way that we could revisit that to help the, munici the other municipalities regain some of that money that Bath again will be having the asset at the end, which is an well, improved but, asset. But they're not gonna keep it as an asset. I mean, whoever gets that is gonna completely renovate or redo or re, they're, it's not gonna be kept as a school, it's not gonna be kept as- I'm not saying it doesn't matter. It's the same, they, Bath owns the asset, which right. is the building. Right. And they're going to sell the asset and make a profit off the asset, which has been improved by the money from the RSU. So, I'm just wondering if there's any way to help the other municipalities who aren't going to end up with an, the improved asset, like Bath, the city of Bath is, that if we, there could be something in that MOU to reconsider because this has pushed the time frame out more. But I think the bond will already be paid, right? It's already, it's, pay, it's paid. It would, it, it would be paid by the time we By the time it is anyway, yeah. But the portion that the municipalities have paid out of that bond, I mean, like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm trying to look at it from an yeah, equity standpoint saying, and, but... um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful, but I'm also to be grateful, but also to be realistic that, you know, this, 
the city of Bath will gain profit out of this sale um, in a way that won't profit or, or help Woolwich or Phippsburg or, you know, or Owsick or something like that. Um, it's not what we all thought of happening, you know, even though we planned it. And I'm grateful, very grateful that we have a place for the kids to go. Um, and we're also Bath, we're helping Bath because Bath's not maintaining that building until it can sell. sell. So it would be sitting there costing the, the city money. Now it's not costing the money. It's an approved asset and they don't have to pay off the bond out of the sale price. So there's three or four wins here for the city. I just think it's an unforeseen tragedy that, um, you know, that none of us right. knew, knew was going to come. And we're putting money into it because we need to for our students and for our staff, which, you know, I guess one could argue has, you know, a positive impact for that building, but that's what our responsibility is. Sure. Um, yeah. And the city is, um, you know, has, has helped us be there because if we weren't, we'd be, I don't know where we'd be, um, you know, on the base or we'd be in portables and um, that insurance money would be, it would be hurting us as a district that we wouldn't have nearly as much as what we have that we can, um, you know, have in an account. So, um, you know, and again, we have an annual lease with the city and um, that's, you know, that's what we have yeah, right now. I don't know how that works. So I don't know if they'd be able to argue that they wanted to sell it sooner to get the money, to get something developed, to get the tax revenue, and now they're not getting any tax revenue from that spot. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I don't know, you can get into a long, complicated, I'm not saying it's one way or the other. I understand <laughs> what you're saying. Yeah, because but, the market is so volatile right now, it would be a good time to sell it. They're not going to. Right. Who knows what it's going to look like when they do sell it compared to now? So that's something that I can't really predict. Right. They're going to make it. At, they're going to make a profit off of it whenever well, they sell it because it's going. It's a profitable place to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Probably. Oh, so I'm just thinking when they do make that profit, could they reinvest some of that? Some of that because that MOU is set up that way. Could we? revisit it. It's just one one person's request though. So okay. um any other questions on Lake Newell and where we are. All right. Thanks for the conversation. Um 9.4 personnel report. Any update? Yeah, no, we just put it on there in case we had any um, professional staff to bring to you to have approved. But again, we've got uh, a couple support staff, one food service assistant and athletic trainer that are open. And so, um, you know, as soon as we, I'll, you know, keep you up to date on as soon as we fill those. So. Okay, great. Yep. Um, and so we begin this school year, huh? Uh, September 18th. Uh, please note that's what the third. Yeah, it's a little early. It's a little earlier, and thank you. That's because uh, Yom Kippur would have been that uh, fourth Sunday going into Monday. So thanks for rescheduling that. Uh, much appreciated. So it'll be Monday, September 18th, uh, right here? Yes. Okay. Um, any Anything else good to the cause? Anybody have anything? All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Anybody? <laughs> Anita <laughs> and sorry. Megan. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you all for being here. Take care. We'll see you in a while. Nice trick or treat, y'all.